it's not every week that I get to open this segment with good news, but I want to start tonight with a tip of the beret to the good people of France, who became the first nation in the world to enshrine the right to abortion into their constitution. And when asked why they did it, they pretty much just said, well, we don't want to wind up like America now, do we? And in a tantalizing vision of what we could be as a nation if we weren't so damned religious, I should point out that this wasn't exactly a tight vote. Of the 925 members of parliament that could vote on this, 780 voted in favor. That's just shy of 85%. And when the bill passed, there was uproarious applause and they lit the Eiffel Tower up in celebration, which really makes you wonder what those abortion is murder assholes must think of French people. And make no mistake, this is a historic thing. France's prime minister told the people gathered to celebrate the law's passage, quote, we are haunted by the suffering and memory of so many women who were not free. Today, the president must respond to history. To enshrine this right in our constitution is to close the door on the tragedy of the past and its trail of suffering and pain. Let's not forget that the train of oppression can happen again. Let's act to ensure that it doesn't, end quote. And while France is making historic strides in the field of women's rights, what are we doing back here in the good old U.S. of A.? Well, the biggest stride I could find for us was that a pastor in North Carolina who said that a women who wear shorts deserve to be raped later admitted that he was wrong. So yeah, this is the story of Pastor Bobby Leonard of the Bible Baptist Tabernacle in Monroe, North Carolina. He was giving a sermon talking about the previous weekend that he spent leering at women at an outlet mall and counting to see if more of them wore pants or shorts, which is already plenty creepy even before he adds, quote, if you dress like that and you get raped and I'm on the jury, he's going to be free. Well, a clip of that shit went viral and all of a sudden he saw the light and decided that maybe he should walk his endorsement of sexual assault back a bit. First, he said that the sermon was taken out of context. And I was like, well, if you wanted people to have the context, why the fuck did you immediately delete it from your website? But eventually Leonard did apologize. By then, he'd basically deleted his and his church's entire social media presence, so his apology was limited to a reader board outside the church that said, quote, I am sorry for any hurt. I was wrong. Pastor Leonard, end quote. And before I let you go, I have to highlight one more story for you, because last Tuesday, Brian Houston, formerly of Hillsong Baptist Church, sent out a tweet that simply read, quote, ladies and girls kissing, end quote because he apparently thought that bit was a search bar, which is fucking hilarious. But as is so often the case when a Christian idiot falls into a trap of his own making, Houston's desperate flailing just keeps making it both worse and funnier. 16 minutes after the original tweet, he deletes it and tweets out, quote, I think my Twitter may have been hacked, end quote. Then he has an assistant tweet out a lengthier, yeah, it was definitely hacked statement, perhaps hoping that his excuse would be more believable coming from a woman. Then he had her tweet out another tweet reiterating that excuse, along with a partial screenshot of an email saying that his Twitter account had a suspicious login attempt, though the screenshot fails to contain any information about when that happened. So he almost certainly had someone try to log into his account suspiciously so that he could have this excuse all so that he didn't have to admit to looking at the most anodyne possible excuse for porn. So while we all take a minute to appreciate the fact that we atheists get to watch porn guilt-free, I'll wrap things up for you and hand you back over to Noah, Heath, and Eli. <laughs> 